We look back, January 18th, 1996, and the Sockeyes, thanks to determination like this by Rod Armstrong, Jesse Nakasura, and Rob Yule, score goal number four en route to a 6-4 to four victory over the Port Coquitlam Buckaroos. That was win number 25 on the season. The Sockeyes will look for the same kind of effort tonight as they look for win number 30, and with it, clinching first place. From the Mineroo Arena in Richmond, this is Rogers for Sports. the Ridge Meadows Flames and the Richmond Sockeyes, the Pacific International Junior Hockey League on Rogers 4 Sports. I'm Mark Jones as we're trying to take a look down here. Mark Jones along with Mark Patrick and boy oh boy we're just two seconds into this first period and I didn't see that uh, little first part of this thing here uh, Mark the first a couple seconds what happened well it was Russ Brew Russ Brew went right after I think it was Jeff Corbett and he just started pummeling him and Corbett just ducked his head and Brew just started wailing away and I don't think Corbett expected it I think it was Corbett I didn't catch his number but a, a quick start we talked to the coaches before the game they said this wasn't gonna happen it happened right off the bat my oh my and is this gonna be interesting tonight we don't even have a chance to we don't even get a chance to look uh, to get a to get settled in and look at things. And um, Pacific International Junior Hockey League here on Rogers Four. The referee for tonight is Kerry Gregory. He's got his hands full already. His linesmen are Todd Zilke and Todd Morgan. And um, Sockeyes in their home white with red and black trim. The Flames in their road red with white and orange trim. And that's the quickest we've been put to work here, Mark. Here's oh, uh, I'm going to try to pick up the announcement for fighting and again misconduct penalties being served by number 26 rob ewell time of the calls two seconds got it with a save sockeyes are short-handed seven two, minutes two in minutes penalties for russ brew for fighting and again misconduct time of the calls two and seconds. we'll get the official time i guess it was uh, two seconds in was the official time on that so right away a power play put to work let's see what they do open net scores one nothing flames that was an easy goal for Rod Algretto. He had the wide open net. Well, actually, he didn't, but he put it right between a, a very big five hole. He had lots of time, and Algretto was positioned perfectly in front of the net, and that hurts the Sockeyes. They take, uh, I don't know, what do you call it, a stupid penalty going after Corbett like that, and a great chance for the Flames to get up on the Sockeyes early, and they do. Nice goal by the Flames. Way to work the power play. Put it right through the five hole. Let's take a look at it here, Mark. Well, he had lots of time in front of the net as well, Mark, to just yeah. put it where he wanted, and Godet had his legs wide open, and he buried it. So one to Ridge nothing, Meadows the score, goal, goal coming at 36 by seconds. number 15, Rod Allegretto, assisted by number 12, Darcy Frederick, and by number 4, Tavis Eaton. Time of the power play goal, 35 seconds. Allegretto, the scorer on that Allegretto one. Allegretto from Frederick and Eaton. On the power play, time of the goal, what, 35 seconds. 35 seconds, the time of that opening goal. And we have got quite a game already. One to nothing, the score, and the game is just barely a minute old. We got a penalty, we got Russ Brew. I guess he's gone from the game uh, for that one. Uh, I didn't get the full announcement on that. He's got seven minutes, uh, did have seven minutes in penalties when it all started out. Well, let's just tell everybody what happened last time these two teams met. They went into overtime. Brendan West scored the game winner in overtime, and that's when it got real ugly. And a lot of the Ridge Meadow Flames went after Brendan West, and it caused a, Brent, a bench clearing brawl. Both teams got on the ice, even some of the coaches got involved, and it was a real ugly game. I talked to Crosley before the game. He said, This is not going to happen again. A Crowther, for, head coach of the Flames, said it wasn't going to happen again. Man, it started right off the faceoff. Oh, hopefully, get some. Play-by-play play in here. Here we go. The Flames are setting up on this power play. Five and a half minutes left in this major penalty power play situation they've got. The starting goaltender is a former Sockeye in his own right. Number 35, Chris Malassi for the Flames. Jeff Goddett in net for the Sockeyes. The Flames setting up in their own end. Starting to carry it out there is Jamie Worcester. Plays it ahead there to Chris Pinch. Racing after the puck is Wade Bully. Bully in there. Shot from the point, just whistles off the mark. Howitt on the far boards to pick up the puck. He's out there with Wust. Played across there for Ryan Baltzer. 
And it goes down the ice. Sockeye's killing some time off the penalty. Back on the Flames, a shot blocked there. Coming in, picks up the puck, and Overgaard clears it down the ice. Still lots of time in this power play. Four minutes, 34 seconds left, and the Ridge Meadow Flames have got a great power play. The Sockeyes know it. What a great way to start this game for the Flames. They could put the Sockeyes away early. And they're trying to do it. They've got one on the power play in this one to nothing lead. Shot in there by Tavis Eaton, one of the alternate captains for the Flames. Setting up behind the net, the wraparound attempt. It's blocked there. From behind the net, the other way. Collision in there, Corbett. Clint McLean comes up with the puck. McLean tries to get it to Overguard, can't get it through. Rory Graham after the puck. Dan Tall in there with the puck. And McLean just shovels it down the ice. 3.45 remaining in the major penalties to Russ Brew. Just about three and a half minutes gone in this opening period. One to nothing the score. Opening goal by the Flames, scored by number 15, Rod Allegretto. From the point, walking the puck in, plays it back to the other side. Brody Kish plays it back to Eaton, the shot right on. Godet turns it aside with very little trouble. Dennis, after his man, throws him in along the boards. Played back to the point. Eaton shot, blocked there, but not out as Tarr blocked it. Another shot, just whistles wide, and Godet must feel like he's in a firing range right now. There's another shot. Now fired out and down the ice. Well, that shot from Keisha, the point almost went right through Godet's five hole. It just trickled wide as it did. It did go through his five hole, actually, and just went wide. Sockeyes put it out into the neutral zone and back to Chris Molossi in net there for the Flames. Sides where he's going to play with Crane coming in and putting a bit of pressure on. Sockeyes would love dearly to get a shorthanded goal right now, but the Flames aren't going to have any part of that right now. Rob Marion carries it to center to Darcy Frederick, to Marion. Marion passes it off. Crane gets the puck and gets it out into the neutral zone. Boy, Myers just leveled Marion and then gave him a little thump in the back of the head after. Great play by Myers, and the ref didn't do anything about it. Five minutes gone, first period. One to nothing, Flames, as... Brody Kish fires it in there. There's a hit along the boards in front of the Sockeyes bench. Wade Boley puts it along the boards. And there's Dan Plant putting some pressure on in the neutral zone. Shot there. Godet turns it aside and gives the rebound there. Sitting in front and the Sockeyes put it out into the neutral zone. A minute and a half remaining in Russ Brew's penalty. Five and a half gone in the opening period. One to nothing Flames as across the line comes Brandon Sung into the corner. Setting up, three Flames, two of them in front there and the puck comes loose. Coy Myers with Brad Swanson shorthanded. Myers into the Flames zone. Myers trying to work through. Myers shot, but lost to save the rebound. Howard has a puck. Can't get much on it. The great effort there by Coy Myers jumping up in the play. Back come the Flames as we got a stoppage in play with 55 seconds left in the penalty to Russ Brew, and that draws some reaction Ladies as the Sockeyes are killing this penalty. The, the Sockeyes Sockeye bench Ruben. is just pumped. They are screaming at every possibility when the, when the puck comes back to the point of the power play to the Ridge Meadow defenseman. The uh, bench of the Sockeyes is just screaming. There's a look at Jeff Crossing to, to, the to the right and to his left, or to the left of the screen rather, is Sylvain Leone, the assistant coach out there. Sockeyes with a win tonight will clinch first place and assure themselves, assuming they can go through the playoffs all the way, assure themselves home ice advantage. Face off in the flame zone to the right of Molossi. Off the face off. Puck goes behind the net. 52 seconds left in the Sockeyes penalty. Shot fired in. Godet turns it aside as a shot there by Mike Pete. Alternate captain for the Flames, Rob Marion, setting up, setting up 
Centering pass goes back to Eaton and goes outside the line as Aaron McShane, former Port Coquitlam Buckaroo, now a Sockeye, sets up. Centering pass, Wuss scores! Brendan Wuss, and it's all tied at one apiece. Aaron McShane made it happen in his own end. He deflected that pass that was going back to the point. That made it happen. He went in the corner, got the puck, and fed Brendan Wust absolutely perfectly. Brendan Wust had lots of time, and Wust put it to his forehand and then put it right upstairs. Hopefully we'll get to see a replay on that goal. That is Brendan Wust's 20th goal of the season, his 50th point. Goal coming at 6.40 of this opening period. It should be Wust from McShane, but we'll wait for the opening or the, the call. There's, there's Wust. He puts it in. I asked Crowther before the game what he had to do to stop the Sockeyes, and he said simply he's got to stop the Wust line. Richmond goal scored shorthanded by number 16, Brendan Wust. Assisted by number 8, Aaron McShane. Time of the goal, 6.40. There it is, West from McShane at 6.40. It's all tied, short-handed short -handed goal, and we have a stoppage in play. Pacific International Junior Hockey League action from Richmond's Mineru Arena. There you see it, the Sockeyes and the Flames in a 1-1 time. We haven't even played seven minutes of this opening period. We've had a couple penalties, a power play and a shorthanded goal, and there's the shorthanded one scored by Brendan Wuss to tie this game up. Oh. Sockeyes have killed the balance of that penalty, giving up just one goal on that major. But I suppose for some people, Mark Patrick, one goal, that's one too many to give up on a major penalty, any power play goal, but seven minutes worth of penalties, and they killed off the bulk of it. Ivan Usyk. Coming in, checked off the puck there. Ryan Balter and Ivan Usyk, I think he caught a high stick. There's a penalty indicated on the play, and that's what it is. High sticking the call. That'll go against Ryan Balter. He hit Ivan Usyk off the puck originally, and then went right back after him and gave him a bit of a high stick, and this could be more than two. This could be five if Ivan Usyk's bleeding. Oh, we're going to see here's, uh, here's the infraction in just a moment. Uh, that was a hit. Uh, that that might was have just been off the camera angle there. I don't know if that was the play or not. That was not the play. That, that was not the penalty. What we just saw, anyways. The so Balter went right after Ivan Usyk when Ivan Usyk had the puck. He hit him off the puck and then stayed right with him and just sticked him right up near the face area. And it's just going to be a two-minute minor. So the phase off just inside the flame zone. Swanson waved out. So Ivan Usyk takes the face off against Marion. Off the face off. Jeff Overgaard. To number 14, with Robertson. Ryan Baltzer. Two minutes for high sticking. Time of the call, 731. Baltzer with the penalty. High Baltzer sticking at 731. Sticking. Time of the call. And the flames shoot it down the ice. Jeff Overgaard is just throwing his weight around this whole shift here so far and the shift before this. He's playing like a big man because he is. He's a big, big boy. Swanson fires it in. Ivan Usyk and Overgaard out there, his line mates. Overgaard setting up. Back to Dennis at the point. Dennis is shot. And Malassi easily gloves that one to stop the play. 38 seconds gone in the Flames penalty. Eight minutes, nine seconds gone in this opening period of play. We're tied at one. Well, the Sockeyes can clinch first place tonight. All they need is a win. If they do not win tonight, uh, they do need a win and a tie for the remainder of the season to clinch first place, but they'd love to do it tonight. We talked to uh, Jeff Overgaard before the game, and he said tonight is the night. They want to do it right now. There's a shot from Dean Dennis from the point. It was a good shot. It went through a bit of traffic, but Malassi had no trouble with it. Off the faceoff, Malassi has to handle the puck, and he leaves it there for Mike Pete, who plays it off the boards. It's kept in there. Puck bouncing all over the place. Racing in there is Brendan Wust. Can't get the puck. Howard has it. Back to Tar. Tar shoots! Just off the mark a little bit. How it's still trying to keep the puck in. And the Flames managed to fire it out. As Dan Tall gets it down the ice, Godet comes out and leaves it. Boley being chased by his counterpart. Another number 17, Brandon Sung. Wust has it there to Boley. Boley sets up at the point. Plays it in there to Wust. 
Wasp coming off the boards. Fires it across to Tar. Tar being watched. And Sockeyes unable to set up here on this power play in the last little bit now. Just 30 seconds left in this power play opportunity. They'll try it again. Steve Howitt comes to center across the line. Drops it there for number eight. And it's dropped there. And see who that was. It was dropped. It was number eight. That was Aaron McShane. Ten seconds left in the power play. Offside the call. Aaron McShane made a nice move when he got over the blue line, but then passed it off, and he, he maybe should have just taken the shot as he had a great chance to do so. There's Crowther, the head coach of the Ridge Meadow Flames. We talked to him about the big game against the Sockeyes last, a couple weeks ago, I guess, and he had nothing to say. He didn't want to talk about it. He just wanted to leave it in the past, and he said as well that nothing's going to happen tonight. Off the faceoff. Puck played into the flame zone. Back to the point. Clint McLean. A penalty is now over to the Flames. Sockeyes unable to capitalize on that first power play opportunity of the evening, but they keep the puck in. Zercher gets hit right at the bench as he was blindsided a little bit, but he's all right. Back come the Flames. Setting up centering pass. Jody Crane to Zercher. Puck there to Darcy Pinch, and in behind the net it goes. Clint McLean, and back outside the line it goes. Jody Crane couldn't quite get the puck. Under 10 minutes to go in this first period. We're tied at one, the centering pass across. It's Darcy Pinch. Gets it there, the puck, not out. Shot in, and Gil Fillon has it. Plays it out. Centering pass across there for Chris Pinch. Pinch moving in, centering pass. Decides to take the shot. Now the centering pass, and Swanson picks that one off. Puck flipped into the Richmond zone by Tavis Eaton as the Flames make a change. That's Myers. Played ahead there into back and forth we go. Now Overgaard with Ivan Usyk, a bit of a two-on-one. Delayed offside, and the offside is called as Overgaard touches it. This game, to me, has got potential to become a very, very rough hockey game. The Ridge Metal Flames are still in it. They could still clinch first place. They've got a long way to go to get there. they basically got to win all their games, and the Sockeyes have to lose all theirs, but it could happen. This is a big game for the Flames, and it's a big game for the Sockeyes. They want to clinch it tonight. This is a very, very good game to watch. If you're sitting at home getting ready to watch this game or watching it just started to, hey, stick around. You're in for a great hockey game tonight. Both these teams in their last two respective games have won both of them. The Flames got a win in overtime in their last game over Port Coquitlam, who's currently sitting in third spot. Sockeyes in their own zone. Swanson. Pass too far ahead. That's going to be icing. And there's the call. And Swanson was out there with Ivan Usyk and Overgaard, but the pass just a little too far ahead. We're going to move the faceoff back into the Richmond zone. Well, the Sockeyes and the Flames have played each other seven times this year, and the Sockeyes have got the better record. Four wins, two losses, and one tie. Mark Jones and Mark Patrick and the Rogers 4 crew here at Richmond's Mineral Arena. Rogers 4 Sports. A good crowd on hand here tonight to watch... One of the, I guess, uh, we wind down. I guess it's the last matchup between these two teams here during regular season action. Sockeyes, 35th game uh, coming into tonight's game. This is game number 35. Swanson fires it in there off the glass. Overgaard throws a bit of a hit on number 11. Robertson keeps it in. Now the puck comes back, and Dennis has to cover for him. Dennis and Robertson, the defensive pair out there right now for the Sockeyes. Sockeyes forward line is McShane with Swanson and Ivan Usyk. Out come the Flames. Puck put back in as it's handled there by Brody Kitsch. Dennis puts it off the board. Picked off there by Rob Marion. Three Sockeyes to center. 
Ivan Usyk offside the call as it was three sockeyes with basically one flame in there to defend and one more coming back battling and that's what pushed the sockeye player offside. Well, Aaron McShane joins the Sockeyes. This is his third game this year for the Sockeyes. He played in Poco last year. Played uh, Actually, he's been in there for the last three or four years. He only played about 13 games last year. He was in and out of the lineup. He averaged about a point a game. And uh, Crosley said he was one of the better players last year uh, when he played for Poco against the Sockeyes. They had a lot of trouble against McShane. And looking forward to him playing with the Sockeyes this year and in the playoffs. McShane, a resident of Surrey, played his minor hockey in both Surrey and Richmond. And there's the puck goes out of play just down below our location here. He's played two games so far this year, and he's got five points, a goal and four assists. So he's had a great start this year for the Sockeyes. Recapping this, these two teams' matchup throughout the rest of the, or the, the earlier part of the season, seven games played. Sockeyes have four wins, two losses, one tie. Uh, we look a little bit there at some of the uh, other action out here in, in tonight's game. Sockeyes last matchup January 19th against uh, the Flames. Sockeyes and Flames met up in Ridge Meadows on January 19th. 4-3 to three overtime win for the Sockeyes. Puck fired in. Chris Gilfillan. 7.15 remaining in this opening period of play. We're tied at one as Howitz checked off the puck and back come the Flames. Darcy Frederick tries to get it ahead for Marion. And Howitz touches the puck and what's the call here? We'll see. So that stops the play here with 13 minutes gone in this opening period of play. It's nice to have two hockey players behind us. They can help us yeah, out with these calls. They're throwing eh? in their comments here. Jesse Nakasura not in the lineup tonight, and he's, uh, and we'll thank Jesse for that, for telling us that was a glove hand pass. I guess I wasn't right on top of it. We'll thank off, Roddy Armstrong for unplugging our TV. What's that, Mark? We'll uh, thank Roddy Armstrong for unplugging our monitor here. He kicked the plug, and we were without a TV for minutes. You well, see, they're not used to being up here. They're causing all kinds of havoc, but they're helping us out too, so... Wade Bowley, the captain of the Sockeyes, handles the puck, puts it around the boards there for Steve Howitt. Howitt gets it ahead to Crane. Crane, Howitt joining him. Centers it, Howitt scores! Got the pass from Crane, Howitt puts it past Molossi, it's 2-1. to one. Well, here it is, Crane down the left side, and he passes it perfectly to Howitt, and Howitt just deflects that one right between the five hole. A beautiful goal by Steve Howitt. Nice pass by Jody Crane. And the Sockeyes lead 2-1. to one. That's Howitt's 25th goal of the year. He's got 53 points on the season. He leads the Sockeyes in points. Richmond goal scored by number 19, Steve Howitt. Assisted by number 10, Jody Crane. And by number 17, Wade Bowley. Time of the goal, 13.30. Got in, almost got cut out in front. Shot Howitt there. From Crane and Off Bowley. the mark. Time of the goal, 13.30. I didn't get to pick up the time of that goal, but it was... A Howitt from Crane and Bowley, and the Flames almost tied up right there. The Flames are wanting this one back. Led one to nothing on a power play early on. Now, Sockeyes have taken the lead two to one. There's Zercher with Tar. Tar leaves it there for Ivan Usyk. Ivan Usyk moving in, shoots. Molossi the save, juggles it. Can't get the puck. Zercher goes down in front of the net. Centering pass for Zercher. Ivan Usyk being worked over there. Centering pass for Tar. Tar trying to get it to Zercher. Zercher being hooked back there. No penalty on the play. Drop pass there for Benedictson. Benedictson and Tar gets it ahead for Ivan Usyk. Racing in there as his line mates go for a change. Overgaard tries to center it. Five minutes remaining first period. Two to one Sockeyes on goals by 
Howitt and West. Breaking through to the fence there. Robertson does a nice job to tie up the flame player. The puck is still loose. It's loose there. It's clear to the front of the net. And the Flames putting the pressure on. It was dangerous as it was cleared almost right to a Flames player, but he couldn't quite get to it. They're still putting the pressure on. Rory Graham. Puck tied up in skates. Comes back to the point. The shot just off the mark. Nice blocker saved by Godet. Ivan Usyk muscling his way through. He's got Overgaard with him. Ivan Usyk. Oh, the centering pass for Overgaard, who's going to the net. The timing was just off. What a great pass by Ivan Usyk. Jeff Overgaard just didn't have his stick on the ice. Overgaard just trying to get it to Swanson. Picked off there by Tavis Eaton, who's logging a fair bit of ice time. Eaton shot offside as he gets the shot away. With 4.08 remaining in this opening period of play. At the end of the first period, we'll have Jeff Crosley joining Mark Patrick. And we'll also have, at the beginning of our second period, our scoring summary and recap of this period. 2-1 to one the score as you look at Tavis Eaton, his team, on the short end of the score at this point. We'll have to ask just Jeff Crosley at the end of this period about that uh, little exchange between Yule and Corbett. See if that had anything to do with their last meeting. Yule and Corbett, or are you talking about Brew and Corbett? What's that? Brew, oh, Brew sorry. Brew and Corbett, right. No problem. I just thought maybe I missed something out there. There's Rob Yule as we speak about him. He puts a puck out and into the neutral zone. He's tied up there. Speak of the devil. How do you do that? No idea. Play carries on. Sean Tarr. The defensive pairing is Clint McLean and Gil Fillon for the Sockeyes right now. The Flames putting some pressure on. Pinch is out there. Chris and Darcy Pinch are out there with number 14, Ryan Baltzer, one of the alternate captains. Flames putting the pressure on. Puck flying all over the place in there. Gil Phelan puts it ahead to Tar, who's hit. Puck kept in. Now down the ice it's going to go, and this will be icing on the Sockeyes. Exactly three minutes remaining Ladies in this opening period of play. Final score from St. Louis. The Vancouver Canucks to the St. Louis Blues. That is John two, Paveo for the Ridge Meadow Flames. And Paveo is... Uh, well, he's played most part of the season. He's got one goal, six assists, Once seven again, points. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, before the end of the second period, don't forget to minutes. go by the Sockeyes booster booth. As we take a look there at the Sockeyes bench, Steve Ryan Howard just coming on. There's well backup goaltender Ryan Morrison. Dawes at the far right of your screen. Back up for the Sockeyes. The Flames back up is Ziga Ivanik. That's at the Sockeyes booster booth next to the main entrance. Interesting to see what head coach Jeff Crosley of the Sockeyes has to say as his team was down early on a power play goal by the Flames. Now up two to one. With just under three minutes remaining in this opening period, Steve Howitt dodges a check and carries it to center with McShane and Wust. Wust centers it. And player tied up. Back come the Flames. Allegretto across the line with Frederick towards the net. Centering pass. Got it. He got his stick on it a little bit there anyways. Flames keeping the pressure on. Tied up. Penalty on the play. Got it's got the puck, but the Sockeyes are going to be shorthanded. Flames going to have an opportunity to tie this one up before the end of the period on the power play. Rob Marion is going to the net. He just got tripped up. He still got the shot away. But Howitt will go off, most likely for tripping. Here's the play here. We might get to see it. There's Howitt. He just pulled out the left leg of Rob Marion. And he'll have to sit two minutes to see trips up Marion. 2.27 left in the first period, so the Flames will get to finish this power play in this period. Richmond penalty on number 19, Steve Howitt. Two minutes for tripping. Time of the call, 17 So tripping the call on Howitt at 17.33. So the Sockeyes for tripping. Time of the call, 17.33. Having to kill off their third 
penalty, or I guess we should rather, we should say the Flames on their third power play opportunity, including that major penalty situation they had. McShane coming in towards the net. Oh, great save by Malasi as he sprawled across and stopped McShane. McShane has made an instant impact since joining the Sockeyes. Just a few games ago, he's already on the score sheet tonight in this 2-1 Sockeyes lead. Crane doing a nice job killing the penalty, and he puts it back into the flame zone, and that draws some reaction. With a minute 35 remaining in this opening period of play. A minute now remaining in the Sockeyes penalty. Draw pass there for Marion. He's got Trimble with him. At the point, it's Brody Kish. Eden at the other side. Eden shot off the, just off the mark. Got it. May have got a little bit on that. Uh, got a bit of that. Malasi comes out of his net and handles it there. For Brody Kitch. Pass to Eden. Back to Kitch. Kitch across the line. Got Marion at the near point. Puck trying to tie it up in there, and it is tied up with 52 seconds left in the opening period. We'll have a face-off to Jeff Gaudet's right, deep in the Richmond zone. Only 25 seconds left in this power play. The Flames have got to use this to their advantage. They've got a face-off here in the Sockeyes end. 52 seconds left in the period. They know, or they'd like to, at least try and put one by. Gaudet here is a great opportunity to tie this hockey game up and go into the dressing room tied at two instead of down by one. Off the face-off. Puck comes back to the point. Shot through a screen. Over guard. Fires it. Out in the neutral zone. Brad Swanson trying to fight his way through. Waiting for over guard. Over guard coming in late on the play. Flames doing a pretty good job. Even though they are trailing. Pretty good job in their own end. Five. Tying up. Sockeyes tall. Centers it back. Pete moving in. Penalty over. They score. Just as Howard steps on the ice. And it's all tied at two. Mark, Mike Pete, who scored that goal, did not even know he scored it. He was already circling away right after the shot when the puck went in. He turned around to find out that the puck was in the net. If you see this replay, you may even see that he didn't even see himself score. But a good shot. He just put it to the net. Godet misplayed it. And Pete just put it by the glove side of Godet. And this game is tied at two. So 19.34 of this opening period of play. The fourth goal of the evening, the second for the Flames. And Mike Pete scores it just at the end of the penalty. Rouge Meadows goal scored in the power play by number 66, Mike Pete. Assisted by number 18, Dan Tall. And by number nine, Darcy Pinch. Time of the power play goal, 19.34. Well, they're calling it a power play goal, but it was Pete one second after the power play Pinch ended. It was 19.34, so we'll uh, we'll see. We could be wrong. Myers in there. It's all tied at two. There's the buzzer. The teams go to the dressing room after 20 minutes, tied at two. Quite an interesting period there, Mark. It was an interesting period. It got off... It it started off with a bang as as Russ Brew went right after Corbett and just started pounding on him. Sockeyes were shorthanded for seven minutes. They did give up one goal on the power play to the Flames, but then they killed the rest of that power play. They did a great job of killing it. Came back short a shorthanded goal and uh, then went up 2-1, and now it's tied at two as, as the Flames get a late goal here in the second period. Richmond Sockeyes head coach joining us here momentarily, um, Jeff Crosley, and uh, we'll get his thoughts. I guess it'll be yourself getting his thoughts. We'll all well, listen, listen in. But, if you want to uh, join in, Mark, you can ask as well. You ask him questions yourself. Welcome back in our usual feature, head coach of the Richmond Sockeyes, Jeff Crosley. Jeff, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks, guys. Jeff, uh, let's uh, start out. Let's go right back to the beginning of this game where Russ Brew went right after Corbett. What happened there? I have no idea, to tell you the truth. Um, they started sort of a uh, fourth line physical checking line, and, and we wanted to um, offset that by um, putting a more physical line out of ours. 
um, I don't even know what to say about it. I'm, I, at the time, I was uh, so in shock, but I just didn't even know how to react. I, just, I, I don't know where it came from. A lot of intensity in this first period, though. Your comments? It was a pretty good period after that. I mean, we got through a big penalty kill, obviously, for seven minutes and um, only gave up the one goal, which was, uh, which was a, a pretty good momentum thing for us. But um, see, it's a good period. It's a good hockey game. I mean, it's not for the faint of heart, for, for sure. But, um, you know, it was a weird start. It's amazing how much of an impact Aaron McShane is making. He's looked good again in this first period. Your comments on him? Well, I just really like him as a player. I mean, he just works really hard, and he can uh, he can bring an element of skill along with his um, the, his entire game. I mean, he'll just, uh, you know, he fits in perfectly here, and um, he's just the kind of guy that you really love to coach. Okay, what do you have to do in this second period to uh, to beat these Flames? Well, we got to, I mean, one of the things we addressed before the game was our discipline and, and not getting into a... Uh, into a grudge match with these guys. I mean, we don't uh, we don't want this to be the type of game where after every whistle there's a glove in the face and um, a lot of um, you know talking and stuff going on. We want to uh, keep the game moving and, and um, you know forecheck them hard, try and score in our chances. And uh, you know, we're giving the puck away a little bit too much in our own zone. We got to make a little more responsible decisions there. Jeff, good luck in the second period and the rest of the game. Thanks, Thanks for stopping by. Jeff Crosley, coach of the. Richmond Sock guys, so that was interesting. He said that he was completely surprised at Russ Brew going after Corbett like that. Well, like I said, I didn't even see it. I was just settling in, uh, and uh, next thing I hear the reaction, I saw it, uh, the Russ Brew going off the ice. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's in interesting two seconds in, and uh, nonetheless, it's, they've settled down to pretty much uh, good hockey action, four goals, two to each team. Um, and I'm still interested about that last goal for the Flames, whether it was on the power play or not. Here, take a look here. There's West. That's the opening goal, uh, or the Sockeyes first goal, anyways. And um, I don't know it should be it should be interesting hockey the rest of the way here. We still got lots of hockey left here, Mark. We sure do, lots of hockey. Coming up in just a moment, we'll have the first period scoring summary and the second period play-by-play -play. from the Richmond's Mineroo Arena. It's Richmond two, Ridge Meadows two. This is a BIJHL on Rogers 4, and we'll return in just a moment. We now go to the second period with Richmond and Ridge Meadows in a 2-2 tie here at Mineroo Arena. The first period scoring summary. The scoring was open 35 seconds in on a power play goal by Rod Allegretto. That assisted by Darcy Frederick and Tavis Eaton is one to nothing for the Flames. Sockeyes came back shorthanded at 6.40 on a goal by Brendan West, set up by Aaron McShane, and it was tied at one. Sockeyes went ahead at 13.30. Howitt from Crane and Bully, two to one the score, and with just 26 seconds left in the opening period, the Flames tied it up on a goal by Mike Pete, assisted by Dan Tall. And Darcy Pinch, and that's where it's tied. And there, they almost break the tie right there. They don't give us much chance off the mark here again. No pun intended, as you've got Mark Jones and Mark Patrick here at the Richmond's Mineroo Arena. They've changed the name on the arena, Mark. You were talking about how you you couldn't remember it. Now I'm all confused of what they're calling it. It's Mineroo Arena here, just adjacent to Mineroo Park in Richmond. As Coy Myers has the puck out there for the Sockeyes in the neutral zone. The Flames in their road red with white and orange trim. And Zercher fighting his way through. He's checked off the puck. Zercher's been hit all over the place tonight. Sockeyes almost caught with too many men. A dangerous there. A little bit of a con confusion. Swanson. Uh, racing after the puck, puck put out into the neutral zone. Dennis puts it right back in. Setting up in there is Brody Kitsch. Kitsch behind his own net. Dennis moves in. Robertson comes over to cover for him, and he puts the puck back in. Minute 25 gone, second period. We're tied at one here at the Mineroo Arena. We're tied at two, rather. Puck played out into the neutral zone. Back come the Flames, racing in on goal. That's tall. Where's the open net? And Godet's out of play, out of the position, but they managed to clear the puck. Great move by Godet. He just poke-checked the uh, flame forward, knocked the puck away from him. Great save by Godet. Great move. Ivan Usyk 
Centering pass there for Overgaard. Swanson's in there. Swanson, the backhander in front, and Overgaard at the side of the net couldn't get it, nor could Ivan Usyk. Ivan Usyk now trying to get it to Swanson. Ivan Usyk setting up. Overgaard shot. Molossi with the save. Fired around the boards and out. Robertson unable to keep it in. Dennis coming back to help him out as they got a number 22 out there now. I don't have any number 22 on my lineup sheet. That's interesting. Well, we'll have to find out who that is for the Flames. We had John Weisgerber, but that's been scratched. So uh, maybe if we get a stoppage and play there, Mark Patrick, you can find out uh, who number 22 is for us. In any event, he is out there. Ivan Usyk gets a shot away, blasts it in there, just off the glass. Play a little bit chippy right now, end to end in, in a sense. 3.05 gone in the second period, tied at two. Both teams seem to be a little bit cautious. Puck back in and offside the call. Stoppage and play. Faceoff comes out in front of the sockeye bench. We'll find out who number 22 is as you just I, ran back up here. I'm out of breath. That's a, that's a long jog. It is John Weisgerber. That's uh, what the guys down in the booth said. So he was supposed to be scratched tonight, but I guess he's playing. Okay, so... John Weisgerber out there wearing number 22. That riddle is solved. Chris Gilfillan, number 23 for the Sockeyes, just handles the puck. And the puck goes back into the Richmond zone. Racing in after it there is Chris Pinch. He throws a hit there on McLean. Puck comes back to the point to Brody Kish. Pinch in front of the net. Racing in with a shot. And it just goes off the mark as Paveo had the puck there. Dan Plant with the puck. Chasing Bolzer. Now the puck played into the middle. Chris Pinch comes in across the line with his brother, and the shot on Gaudet is easily turned aside. From behind the net, play is stopped. 4.02 gone, second period. Richmond 2, Ridge Meadows 2. As you take a look at Dan Plant, originally from Calgary, played his minor hockey in with Richmond Minor Hockey. And now playing in his first full season as a sockeye. A little surprised that uh, Ewell made that pass behind the net there to stop the play. He just looked like he was trying to clear it up the ice, and he just nailed it into the back of his own net. Kind of a crazy play by Ewell. And unless they got a stoppage in play, 15.58 left here in the second period. It's tied at two. West in there against Trimble. Trimble centering a line of Sung and Benedictson. West out there with Howitt and Boley. Boley on the far wing, and I'm just looking... Obviously, he's just in that position there. McShane, West, and Howard, of course, the forward line. Trying to get away from Flames player. West puts the puck into the corner. No icing on the play. As he was crossed the line. West trying to set up. Plays it in right into the stick there of Ron Benedictson, and he carries it to center. Gets it across there to Brandon Sung. As he goes down, and Benedictson goes down, but there's no penalties on the play. No real flow to this second period. Quite a different start uh, than we had at the beginning of the first. We played 4-32. We're tied at two here in the second period, and the faceoff is going to be just outside the Sockeyes line to the left of Jeff Gaudet. It has been a weird game so far, Mark. One guy that's really stood out to me so far is number 25 for the Sockeyes, Jeff Overgaard. He's played great. He's got a lot of hustle. He's been throwing his weight around. He's got 29 goals this year for the Sockeyes. That leads the league in goal scoring. So watch for number 25 tonight, Jeff Overgaard. He looks good so far. Now Aaron McShane trying to get by one man. McShane with four years experience in this league and he's in there as the puck stops along the boards. Not a lot of reaction from the fans right now. Going back to Jeff Overgaard, I had a chance to talk to Jeff uh, before the game and talking about clinching first place tonight. And 
basically zero, we talked two. to Crowther as well, and Crowther one, six, said it's over. Sakai's have got first place. But eight. Overgaard said we want to do it tonight. We know we probably clinched it, but yes, we want to do it tonight. So the Sockeyes are motivated, and they would love to do it right here on home ice against the Flames, who are in second place. Off the faceoff, puck goes back into the flame zone. Malossi leaves it there. For number 77, Jamie Worcester, and he gets the pass ahead, and there's a Flames player goes down, Rory Graham. Now Corbett puts the puck into the neutral zone. Bully now has it. Plays it up, and Corbett has it again. Number 99 for the Flames gets the shot right on net, and Gaudet turns it aside. The shot stopped in that first period were 8-4 to four in favor of Jeff Gaudet. And he's made a couple more. There's one off the post. Shot right off the post. Just hit the, I think the outside of goaltender's right post. Back comes Trimble. Trimble racing through. And now Tar has it. To Brad Swanson. He's got Myers joining him. Swanson. Oh, weak pass. Didn't get it really anywhere. Back to Zercher. The shot. Malossi gets the pad out on that one. In front of that, Howitt has the puck. And now... The buck is fed up into the neutral zone where Benedictson has it. Momentarily. Dennis loses a puck. Flames score! Brandon Sung, 3-2, Ridge Meadows. What a nice goal by Brandon Sung. Sixth of the season. He put it right upstairs on Godet. And a bad play by Dean Dennis. He lost the puck and caused that uh, to happen. Ridge Meadow goes ahead 3-2. to two. What a goal by Sung. He just roofed that one. Wasted no time. Here it is. Dennis makes the mistake. He loses sight of the puck. Sung walks in, goes to his forehand, and just roofs it right upstairs. One more look at it. Got it. Tried to reach for it with his glove, but it just didn't happen. There's been a lot of... Uh, center ice hits. A lot of Ridge hits Meadows behind goal the play. scored unassisted by number 17, Brandon Sung. The time of the goal, 6.13. Sung, unassisted. Time of the goal, 6.13. 6.13, I believe, was the time of that goal. I can get the official call. Here's Ivan Usyk trying to set up. Sung with the go-ahead goal. From the wraparound there, and they try to get one past Chris Malossi. No luck right there. Puck is played across there for Swanson. Malossi covers it, covers it up, and the Flames bench is calling that it was an offside, but there was no call as such. I was trying to say earlier, Mark, there's been a lot of hitting behind the play, a lot of center ice hits, and I've been a little bit surprised that Kerry Gregory hasn't made any calls so far. There's been a lot of cheap shots behind the play. I know Gregory's concerned that something could happen again like it did a couple weeks ago, but I'm a little surprised. Gregory hasn't really made a lot of calls yet tonight, and he's got to be careful because these two teams do not like each other, and if he keeps letting these teams whack at each other before you know it, there's going to be some fights and, and some ugly stuff here at Mineral Arena. Definitely possible. 707 gone, second period, 3 to 2. Ridge Meadows on a go ahead goal by Brandon Sung. Kill Fillin sets up towards the net. I don't think Malossi really saw that one, but it stays out as it goes over the net. Flames would love to break this one open as they're more than capable of doing. McLean to Tar. Tar plays it across. Yule has to backtrack and get it. And he puts it, tries to get ahead for Diane Plant. Plant throws a bit of a hit. Tar in there. And back goes the puck the other way. McLean to Gil Fillin. Ahead to Plant. Rob Yule. Offside. You're saying, Mark, that this Ridge Meadows team can open it up, and you are so right. They are second in goals for this year. They've got six players in the top 11 in scoring. This hockey team knows how to score, and the Sockeyes have got to be on their 
They've got to be playing their best defense. The Sockeyes are, are the best defensive team in the league, and they've got to be playing their best defense to stop this Ridge Meadows team. Not only are they 1-2, and two, the, these two teams, Richmond and Ridge Meadows, in position in the in the league standings, they're 1-2 and two, uh, also in goals for and goals against. Sockeyes with a 205 and 120 goals for and goals against, respectively. The Flames with 196 and 133 goals for and against, respectively. So... It's fairly evenly matched um, right across the board. As you see it here tonight, too. Howitt, the wraparound, open net, Wust after the puck. Puck is covered up. Where is it? They've got it. And we have a stoppage in play. Right there, Sockeye's looking to tie this one up. Puck just didn't bounce the way Brendan Wust wanted it to. He just couldn't seem to get his stick on it. When he did, he didn't get enough on it. Here's the puck in front as Howard got it to, to Wust as he tried to take a shot on net, and then there's Wust banging at it. He didn't give up. He kept trying. But there was just too many Ridge Meadow Flames players there to stop the puck from going in the net. And stop Face Brendan Wust. And, sorry, Mark. And stop Brendan Wust from getting a good shot on net. Face off into the left of goaltender Chris Velossi, and that was a great chance there for the Sockeyes, but Flames doing some good work there. Bully's shot is blocked. Behind the net, Overgaard tied up in there. Overgaard centering pass. Wust trying to get him. Malossi comes out and shovels it ahead to Corbett. A little bit more action coming into this game after the Flames have picked up this lead. Gone ahead, three to two. More hitting. Look at that. Just knocked off the puck right there. Bully having trouble with it. Corbett after the puck. McSheen. To Howitt. Howitt has trouble. He loses his balance and goes to the ice. Dangerous there as a skate came up very close to Coy Myers. It's how it scores. Jeff Corbett. It's four to two flames. Well, that's Jeff Corbett, the guy that Brew went after, and he's a real showboater, as you can just see there. He did the Tiger William dance, and you know that's not going to sit nice with the sockeyes. Here's the goal. He just spun around and burned it right past Godet on the right side. May have caught the goaltender a little bit off surprised that, and uh, the Flames have got a two goal lead. 99. A major shift in momentum in this period. The Sockeyes look like they're sleeping a bit and the Flames have pounced on it. Here's the goal again. As we catch it late, a nice diving pass. Ridge Meadows goal and Corbett just drained it right on the right side. Jeff Corbett, assisted by number 18, Dan Tall. Time of the goal, 8.44. Time of the goal, 8.44. Corbett gets the goal, and he couldn't pick up who got the assist. Swanson back to action. Swanson backhander there, turned aside. Watch for the Sockeyes to turn up the heat here a little bit. Robertson tries to deflect it through, and there, Velocity gloves it and stops the play. I don't remember the last time, Mark, I've seen the Sockeyes down by two goals. This is new for me. It's going to be interesting to see how the Sockeyes respond to something like this. I'm trying to recall. Well, weren't they down in that ridge in that Poco game with two or three right. to nothing there early yeah, on? Yeah, you're right. But you're right. They're at this point in the game where they tied it up in that... It probably has been a little while anyway, so it will be interesting. This is a good good opportunity here for the Flames to, they'd, obviously they'd love to win all, any game, any team wants to win a game, but tonight especially, uh, with this game meaning so much to the Sockeyes in terms of clinching first place, I don't think the Flames want that to happen at their expense, and they're doing as much as they can right now to prevent it. McShane puts a puck in there to Howitt around the boards, a little bit too hard for him. Howard and Wust after the puck. Puck comes out to Robertson. Robertson backhands it in. McShane in there still, and it goes all the way down the ice. Icing might have been called there, but Godet decided to play it. Now Robertson tied up in there. Dean Dennis has the puck. Ten minutes gone, second period. Four to two flames. McShane, puck bouncing all over the place. West trying to set up. He can't control the puck. West shot, scores! 
Brendan Wust. Second goal of the evening, it's 4-3 to three Ridge Meadows. Well, I bet Milosi would love to have that one back. That wasn't really a hard shot, but Brendan Wust picked the side, and he got it. A nice little snapshot wrist shot from right in, right inside the blue line. But I'm sure Milosi wanted that one back, or wants that one back. Here's the replay. As Wust just comes out from behind the net, Wust loses the puck, gets it back, and then just takes a nice little snapshot. It wasn't that hard. It was through a bit of traffic. But Milosi just missed it, misplayed it, and the Sock Guys are back within one. Richmond goal scored, unassisted by number 16, Brendan West. Time of the goal, 10-18. So 10-18, the time of the goal to Wust, his second of the evening. The first one shorthanded to tie the game up. Now he's put his team back within one. And that was an unassisted goal. And the Sockeyes have a face-off in their own zone to the right of Jeff Gaudet. Off the face-off. Puck bouncing all over the place there. Sung after the puck. McLean in there. Ivan Usyk plays it off the boards and out. Back there is Brody Kish. Now Brad Swanson does a nice little flip pass into the flame zone, allowing for a change. Defensive pairing now out there. Coy Myers and Wade Bully, the backhander in front. Oh, Ivan Usyk, the chance right there. I don't think the puck even got to him. Back come the Flames. Partial three on two. Offside the call at the Sockeyes line with 8.39 remaining in this second period. Four to three Flames. Well, Brendan, Brendan West's goal came way against the flow. The Flames were, here's that replay by where Ivan Usyk almost had a chance in front. You're right, Mark. Ivan Usyk didn't get his stick on it. West's goal, though, came against the flow. The Flames were... And basically, it's been their period, all period. And that was a big goal for the Sockeyes because it stopped this Flames momentum a bit and, and cooled them down a bit. And hopefully the Sockeyes can regroup here and make something happen. That was a big goal by Brendan West. Puck cleared in. And icing is the call as it was cleared in there. It's going to go back into the Richmond zone, the faceoff. And it's really quiet in here for a moment anyways. As you take a look at head coach Jeff Crosley, the Richmond Sockeyes. Trying to get his team going. Aaron McShane comes out on the change. Howitt, McShane, and West back out there. This is McShane's third game with the Sockeyes, and he's already got six points. He's been a big part of the last couple games for the Sockeyes, big part of the Sockeyes the last couple games, and he's played really well tonight. He's stood out as one of the, the key players tonight so far for the Sockeyes. Shot, oh, it goes off the side of the net. I think a few people may have thought it went in. Bully, they watch closely there. Puck comes back to the point, and they managed to sneak it outside, get it past Jamie Worcester, the defenseman for the Flames. Puck stolen. Howitt scores! Steve Howitt. It's all tied at four apiece. The Sockeyes time and time again amaze me. They get down four to two and they look awful. There's number 77, loses the puck right to Howitt. You don't want to lose it to that guy. Jamie Worcester was the guy that gave it up and Howitt put it right upstairs. The Sockeyes have tied this game back up and they're right back in it. Worcester just played that puck sloppily, and, and Howitt had a great opportunity. Here it is. Howitt was checked a bit by Marion, but not enough to knock him off the puck, and Howitt gets an easy shot on goal and buries it. Richmond goal scored by number 19, Steve Cody Crane moving it on Howitt. goal. Good 
Good save by Malasi. Assisted by number 16, Brendan West. Time of the goal, 11.51. Here's a break the other way, Corbett. Played back. Good action now. As Jody Crane, where everyone they were announcing the goal, he had a great chance in, and Malasi made the stop. We're tied at four. Plant trying to get the lead pass. And the puck is cleared out of play. Minute and 23 seconds apart. West in on the third goal of the evening for the Sockeyes. West in on the fourth goal, setting it up for Howitt. And we're back to a, with a, to a tie game. It's now tied at four. And you're looking at Wade Bowley, number 17 for the Richmond Sockeyes. He's the captain of this uh, Richmond team. And Bowley has got seven goals on the year, 23 assists, 30 points. He's a big guy. Big stay-at-home defenseman for the Sockeyes. There's that chance by Jody Crane, and all of a sudden the momentum's gone the other way. The Sockeyes seem to have their spirits lifted. Great chance for Crane. He couldn't get it by Molossi. Off the faceoff, Dennis has it. Plays it off the boards and out. Swanson throws a bit of a check, and the puck goes into the crowd into the penalty box. Well, about two minutes ago, Mark, the Sockeyes looked like. They were ready to pack it in. They really didn't look good. They looked like they were just skating around out there, and before you know it, the game is tied. It seemed like they got a renewed life. What there a difference a couple of minutes can make. It's amazing how this team does it. You say you get home watching it. There's great junior hockey action here at Mineru Arena and around the PIJHL many nights throughout the week, so drop in if you haven't lately. It's 4-4, it's Richmond and Ridge Meadows at Richmond's Mineru Arena. Mark Jones and Mark Patrick and the Rogers 4 crew here at Mineru Arena. Pass, the fake shot and the pass. Now it's blocked and out as that was 44 to 66. Kish and Pete trying to work something there. Delayed offside, indicated. Tar tries to steal the puck. And now it goes back into the Richmond zone with 6.43 remaining in this second period, and that's going to be an icing call. No, it's not. It's waved off. Robertson racing in. Puck gets past him, delayed offside as they clear the zone, and they go back in. Puck flipped out to center. Now that could be icing, but it, is, it also is waved off. Back and forth they go. Robertson and Dennis. Robertson now has it. Plays it ahead to Sean Tarr. Tarr across the line. Plays it into the middle and it's picked off there by Ryan Balzer who just fires it down the ice and that will be icing with 6.02 remaining in this second period. There'll be a face-off in the flame zone. I can't see the number on that player. It looks like Rob Marion looks a little injured on that play. He might have got hacked, but he's, oh, he's okay now. He's skating over to the but then is that Marion or number That's nine? Number nine, Darcy Pinch. Right. Take a look at a few of the fans here at Richmond's Mineru Arena. Watching some good hockey action on a Thursday evening. It's still cold outside, so what do they do? They come inside to a cold hockey rink, and we're glad to have them here with us. As we're glad to have you, the viewer, here with us. Face off in the flame zone to the right of Chris Malassi. Off the face off. Puck put to the side there by Malassi. Flames doing a good job of just getting the puck and getting it out. But the Sockeyes managed to foil their attempts there momentarily anyways. Now they feed it ahead there. Two partial two on one. Now the Flames number 88 gets it back there. That was Ron Benedictson. And McLean gets it off the boards and out. Now it's shot down the ice, and icing again is called. A lot of stoppages in play, unlike the first period where it seemed to flow fairly fairly quickly. Well, that first period went by really quick. This second period is kind of dragged along a bit. Both teams just feeling each other out. This is a big game for both teams. The Flames still mathematically have a chance to get first place. Doesn't look like it's going to happen, but they still do mathematically. And they've got to watch out for the Poco Buckaroos. They're in third place right behind them, and they do not want to see Poco catch him. They want to keep that second place. So big game for Ridge Meadows. And of course, the Sockeyes want to clinch first tonight right here in their home, home arena. 
That got a shot just off the mark. Another shot blocked. McShane has the puck, and he doesn't get it out, though. Eden shot blocked, and that hit somebody. Who did that hit? Another shot through the crowd. Godet has trouble with it. The rebound in front. They run over Godet. Godet's caught out of the net, and he may be hurt a little bit. He's shaken up a little bit, but he's staying in there. Well, he got hit right in the groin area, Mark. Well, here comes a stoppage, and we'll see if the trainer, Anson Barrows, comes out. Godet is shaken up a little bit. He's going to check his equipment. This is Coy Myers, though, that really got hit off that shot, and he's going to be limping to the bench. We got a couple injured uh, Warriors out there. Myers struggling to the bench, and then at the net, Jeff Godet's. Here's the replay, Mark, right? Oh, that's, that's just a little bit late, actually, so we're not going to see where Myers got hit. If we could rewind that just a bit, we'd see. He got nailed uh, right in the midsection. I don't want to say... I think it was the inner thigh, so I think he's okay, but he got nailed pretty hard. And the trainers are dealing with him right now. Here's the... Sh oh, we missed it again. It and just... Oh, let's take a look here. We're going to see it. No, it's just, just a little bit back of that. They just added four seconds back under the clock, so it's now 4.55 on the clock. Off the faceoff shot blocked there. McShane is kept in there. Brendan West plays the puck ahead to McShane. McShane trying to get out of his own zone, and he does with West and Howitt. McShane down the right side, moving in on goal, centering pass. Molossi pokes it ahead, and West steals it inside the line. West moving in. Oh, right through the crease. How it in there. Back come the Flames. Corbett turned aside by Jeff Godet, and Robertson crashes into the boards. Boy, if Myers is out, then Robertson, well, he's all right. Sockeyes potentially could have two defensemen down. Flip back in. Godet has a bit of trouble with it. But he manages to keep it out. Knocked down there. The Flames putting the pressure on. In front, penalty indicated. Howard gets the puck, and we have a penalty to the Sockeyes. Cross-checking the call at three, with 3.53 remaining in this second period. Watch this replay here. There's the hit on Dennis, and there's McShane, who just took down Darcy Pinch. Bit of a cross-check from behind. And the Ridge Metal Flames will get a chance to go on the power play here again and try and take the lead. The 4-4 tie. This game has gone back and forth. 3.53 left in the second period. From our unofficial count, there's a score, as Mark Patrick indicated here. Fourth power play opportunity unofficially for the Flames. They've capitalized on one. That was on the major penalty right at the outset. We saw Russ Brew gone from the game. So the Flames have a great chance to take the lead here late in the second period as they did in the first. Number eight, Aaron McShane. Two minutes for cross-checking. Time of the call, 16.07. 16.07, the time of the call. I guess I should clarify. The Flames the tied call, it up late in the first. They got a goal, so that would be the similarity of trying to get another goal somewhat late in the period. Tied at four. Sockeye shorthanded. Jody Crane working tirelessly in there. Crane centers it for Plant, but it's cleared away handily there by Brody Kish. Now the Flames. That's Kish. Cross the line, offside the call with 46 seconds gone in the penalty. This is a really important time for the Sockeyes. You do not want to give up a power play goal here. Only three minutes left in the second period. This is a crucial kill for the Sockeyes. You do not want to go into the dressing room down by one goal. So we'll see if the Sockeyes defense can come through here on this Ridge Meadows power play. And there you take a look. There you can see us. If we look to our left, we're all... And say hello to everybody at home. That's our vantage point here at Mineru Arena, the press box, with a few visitors sitting in here. Off the boards. Puck played back in. Wade Bully plays it around the boards, not out. Zercher tries to get it out. 
Flames on the penalty on the power play, and we have a stoppage in play. Fifty-six seconds left in the sockeye penalty. Cross-checking the call on McShane. Two forty-nine now left on the clock in this second period. Off the face-off. Brody Kish plays it in around behind the net. Gaudet misses it there. Sockeyes feeling a bit of the pressure here. Flames in front, centering pass. Oh, Bowley, that's a nice work there to block that pass. And down the ice it goes. As the Flames are doing a great job of setting up and a golden opportunity for them to take the lead. Had they scored. Zercher. Sockeye shorthanded. So Zercher and Yule are in there for checking. Boley and Tar on defense. 15 seconds left in the Sockeye penalty. 10 seconds. Lead pass ahead there for Tavis Eaton. Cross the line, centering pass. Five. Allegretto, who's got one goal already this evening. Sockeye's one, about to come back to full strength. The Flames keeping the pressure on. Boley in there. McShane's back on the ice, and Zercher comes to center with McShane and Howitt. Zercher across the line. They're calling it offside. So the faceoff will come back outside the line with a minute 43 left on the clock in the second period. Well, there's Alex Zercher for the Sockeyes. They're just entering the Sockeyes bench. He's had not a bad year for the Sockeyes this year. Zercher's played well. He's got four goals, 11 assists, 16 points in 17 games. 143 left. This game is tied. Second period between the Sockeyes and the Ridge Meadows Flames. We're going to get a chance to talk to Roddy Armstrong in the second period intermission. So something Malos to look forward to? Malossi covers that one up and decided to let it, the play continue, put it aside. There's a hit there by Dean Dennis. Round the boards it goes. Ivan Usyk turning with it. Falls. Penalty coming up. This will be a Richmond Sockeyes power play. I didn't see who took the penalty, but... Nor did I. As a trip is indicated. It's Darcy Pinch going to the box. Here it is. Might get a chance to see it. Right there on your left side of the screen, Pinch took down, I think, Ivan Usyk. And he'll go off for two minutes. The Sockeye has a great chance here to go into the dressing room up by one. See Richard if they can do it. Penalty to number nine, Darcy Pinch. Two minutes for tripping. Time of the call, 1841. Pinch with the tripping call at 1841. Our unofficial count, Sockeye's second power play. Over guard to Ivan Usyk as the Sockeyes try to set up here on this power period. play as we enter the last minute of play. Swanson centers it across. Malassi the save. Neil Robertson setting up. Robertson with the deflection, uh, the pass and the deflection by Swanson not on the mark. Centering pass. Malassi the save. After the puck still. Over guard. Back to Dennis. Dennis to Robertson. Robertson skating in. Shoots. It's toe save there by Malassi. 35 seconds left in the pep in the period. This penalty will carry over if the Sockeyes don't score. Ivan Usyk, head to Overgaard. Puck gets away from him. 22 seconds left in the power, in the uh, period. McShane shot. Where's the puck? It's caught up in there, and Ivan Usyk goes in close to the net, and there's I think some tempers getting... Uh, getting, getting uh, what, what are we looking here? What's the word we're looking for? <laughs> Tempers are rising? Heating up. Heating up. up, yeah. That's it. Well, it looks like this power play is going to go into the third period. Only 12 seconds left in the period. 53 seconds left in the power play. The Sockeyes do have a chance here, though, to put one in off the faceoff as the faceoff will be to the left of Malassi in the Flames' end. Exactly, Mark Patrick. Key faceoff in here right now. Watched in there. He's got Howitt and McShane on his, on his wings. Tar and Boley. Let's see if they can do something here. Off the faceoff, puck goes towards the net. Malassi handles it. Puck goes out. And that'll probably do with five seconds left. 
Racing into the Richmond zone is Darcy Frederick. And that's the second period of tonight's game. So we add four more goals to the first period total. In the second period for Ridge Meadows, We're tied at four after 40 minutes. Eight. And for Ridge As you take a look there at the Sockeyes going off, we'll do a, get you a scoring summary again at the beginning of the third period. As we say, it's tied at four, and the Sockeyes will be on the power play going into the third period. As you take a look there again at the Sockeyes going off. We're pleased to welcome to our broadcast here a member of the Sockeyes who's not in the lineup, but you saw in our opening was in on that fourth goal against Port Coquitlam a couple weeks ago in the 6-4 to four win. Number six from the Sockeyes, Rod Armstrong. Rod, thanks for joining us. Um, what, are, what are your thoughts sitting out here uh, tonight? What's your thoughts on the game after 40 minutes here? Well, they started off the second period slow, but I don't know, they seem to be coming on and they're looking better as it goes on. Mark Patrick, ask Give here. us a little uh, input. What's it like playing this Ridge Meadows team? Is it a, is it as bad as it looks sometimes? Is 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 it a real big rivalry? Well, uh, they're quite the chippy team, I guess. But I don't know the boys get get up for playing against this team since they're second place club and big rivalry between the two clubs. No doubt about that. Tell us what happened in overtime the last time you guys played them when West scored and uh, they came and attacked West. Well, West put the puck in the net and pinched apparently just jumped on West and we had cleared the bench because we had won the game in overtime and as soon as we'd done that they cleared their bench and before you know it brawl broke out a <laughs> couple fights here so you're not playing tonight it's not because you're injured at all you're just uh you scratched tonight well I've been sick all week and didn't go to practice on Tuesday and I don't so just having not in the lineup sorry with that with the noise in the background I gotta apologize it's hard to hear in here but uh but um, you got it. I'm, I'm assuming you're happy with your. This is your first year as a sock guy. You've come out of Richmond Minor. Are you happy with your progress thus far as we near the end of the regular season? Yeah, I think I'm improving as the year goes on. Since Christmas, I feel I picked it up quite a bit. Hopefully, I look to improve throughout the rest of the year. Good stuff. Well, we'll take a look here. I think this is going to be one of the goals. This is West's goal as he beats Chris Malossi and. Uh, the team was battling back there. Well, thank you very much, Rod Armstrong, for joining us. Good luck the rest of the way. Rod Armstrong from the Richmond Sockeyes. And that's uh, that's his thoughts after 40 minutes here, Mark Patrick. Um, Sockeyes are going to be on a power play. 41 seconds left in that penalty going into the third period. What Any thoughts you have to add as we go to the break? Well, the Sockeyes have got to take this power play and they got to, they got to take advantage of it. It's a great way to start the third period. If they could get a goal in to start the third period, that could carry them right through the game and, and help them to clinch first place right here tonight in Mineral Arena. So they got to look at this power play. they got to take it seriously and try and get that goal. Okay, well, we'll see what happens as the power play is going to be crucial. Both teams will... Uh, well, rather, one goal for the Flames and uh, no off, no goal so far for the Sockeyes. But who knows what will happen as we go to the third period momentarily. From Richmond's Mineral Arena, it's Richmond 4, Ridge Meadows 4, the PIJHL and Rogers Community 4 will return in just a moment. Welcome back. We now go to the third period with the Richmond Sockeyes and the Ridge Meadows Flames tied at four at the Minaru Arena here in Richmond, British Columbia. Mark Jones and Mark Patrick and the Rogers Four crew along with you here. It was 2-2 after one. It's now tied at four. As we mentioned, we've entered the final 20 minutes of regulation time. 20 seconds left in this power play for the Sockeyes. They're going to try and make something happen right here. Brendan West with two goals on the evening thus far. And he's in there, but the puck comes back into the Richmond zone. Now 10 seconds left in the power play as Gaudet leaves it there for Robertson. Both these teams want this, bin, this win crucial, crucially. Oh boy, tongue-tied here. Neil Robertson puts the puck offside with 42 seconds gone in the third period. Well, the Stock guys had a great chance to get one up on the Flames early in this third period with that power play opportunity. It didn't happen. And there's 19 left, 19, 18 left here in the third period. So it's all tied at four. And we're back at even strength. The Sock guys have got Ivan Usyk, Overgaard, and Swanson out there, one of their big lines. 
Faceoff just in front of the Flames bench, off the faceoff. Puck goes back into the Flames zone where Jamie Worcester, one of the defensemen for the Flames, has the puck. Ivan Usyk after it, out come the Flames. Marion plays it ahead there for Darcy Frederick, the captain of the Flames. Against Bully, shot there towards the net by Allegretto. Swanson, another number 15. Out there. And he starts to try to carry it out. Gets it ahead to Jeff Overgaard. Overgaard across the line. Three men to beat. Into the corner. Tied up there and loses the puck. Penalty coming up. Checking from behind the call. It's a sockeye's penalty, and I don't know who the sockeye is. It looks like it's Marion Ivanusic. So no sooner do they kill a penalty, and they are going to be shorthanded. Well, that's Darcy Frederick, their captain, that seems to be injured. Darcy Frederick was leading the team in scoring for most part of this season, and Rob Marion has since passed him. Marion's got 59 points on the season, and Frederick now with 54. Whoa. Ivan Usyk just below us here. I don't know if you caught that, but he is upset with that penalty call. He just broke his stick against uh, the cement wall here where the tunnel uh, starts, where he goes into the dressing room, and he's not done yet. Ivan Usyk really upset with that penalty call. Yeah, you can hear it. I don't know how much of that is being picked up at home, but there was uh, quite a bit of a racket there. So Jeff Overgaard's come in to serve that penalty. There you see him there. Ivan Usyk gone for the game with a two minutes for uh, two minutes for checking from behind penalty 119. Great chance for the Flames. Here is the call. From behind in a game misconduct. Penalty is being served by number 25 Jeff Overgaard. Time so of the, the call. The have a pal penalty to kill here. The Flames setting up Marion centering pass for Tall. Ivan Usyk tries to tuck it in. Got it. Makes a save and he makes a bit of a. Time Split the save calls, there and keeps it out. From behind the net, Tall setting up there once again. Plon trying to clear it out, doesn't. Kept in there by Tavis Eaton. Rob Marion in there. Plon puts it into the corner. Clint McLean tries the other way, gets it to the point, not out. Kish keeps it in, and there's a stick comes up there on Jody Crane. No penalty on the play. Puck tied up in skates. McLean throws a hit in there. Back to the point it goes. Kish with the shot. Blocked there by Jody Crane. He does that so well. Jody Crane did that last week against Poco, and he does it again here tonight. He's a great shot blocker. Now the puck is shot down the ice. 50 seconds remaining in this power play opportunity for the Flames. And I don't know if Plant is injured a bit. He may be. He goes to the bench there. Maybe he's just winded. After killing that, uh, doing his part in helping trying to kill this penalty off, back come the Flames. Darcy Pinch, or Chris Pinch rather, number 10, cutting to the net. Around he goes, being watched closely by Robertson, plays it back, walking in, gets it to his brother. Darcy shoots it, and it just off the mark. Zercher in there, throws a hit. 20 seconds left in the penalty. Robertson has the puck, fires it out and down the ice as Todd Zilke, the linesman, has to jump out of the way of the puck. Nine seconds left in the penalty. Zercher watching Eaton as Eaton turns on the Jets to center. Cross the line, offside the call. Well, the Ridge Meadow Flames looked really good on that power play. Only three seconds left in it, but they looked great. They had good control and they got some good quality shots on Godet. Godet had to look good, too. He came up with a couple big saves, especially that one on Dan Tall right in front of the net. We'll quickly do the second period. Score, scoring summary and give you the goal scores. It was 2-2. The Flames went ahead at 6-13, making it 3-2 and a goal by Brandon Sung. Two, Corbett two, added two, another one eight, at 8.44, making it 4-2. to two. Sockeyes tied it up on goals by Weston Howitt at 10.18 at and 11.51. And that's where we stand right now as the penalty is over. The Sockeyes have killed that one off. The Flames unofficially are 1-5 for five on the evening. Malossi puts the puck to the corner. Overguard back out after killing that penalty. Swanson! Oh, right in front! And he couldn't quite control it and Malossi had sprawled there to block any place he did have to put it. Now Bully unable to keep the puck in. Tied up in skates. Plays it back and in. And they're going to call that icing. 
as we hit just over the four minute mark here in this third period. Well, just seconds earlier, Brad Swanson took out Ron Benedictson, almost put him into the Flames penalty box. Great play by Brad Swanson. Also, both teams have had a power play here in this third period. Here's that hit. We might get to see it. Or maybe not. That's the chance Swanson had in front of the net. Both teams have had a power play here in the third period, and both teams have successfully killed the other team's power play. Chance for both teams to go ahead here, and it's still tied at four. Shot there off the faceoff. Just goes over the net. But it had to be alert there. McShane plays it out and down the ice. This could be icing again. Waved off. Howard in there after the puck. Can't quite get it. Leads it in, gets it in front. And the Flames skate out. Rory Graham. Howard has the puck. Puts it back in. McShane knocked off there. Off, off the puck. Puck played back. Gil Fillon keeps it in. Puts it in. It's kept in neatly along the boards. Now it comes back into the Richmond zone. Icing is indicated. And Gaudet decides to play it. Howitt plays it ahead. Back come the Sockeyes. Two on one. Aaron McShane. Player hauled down. No penalty call there. Called down again. Again, no penalty indicated. And the Sockeyes are going to watch it. West was taken down twice, and there was no penalty indicated. Mark Gregory was just just happened to be looking the other way both times Swanson was taken down. Unfortunate for the Sockeyes. Dan Plant with a shot. Had a pretty good shot, even though he was tied up. Played back to the point. Dennis with a shot. Turned aside by Malassi. Robertson trying to put it back in. Gets the puck to Yule, to Plant. A little bit too far. Dennis keeps it in momentarily. Does a good job of keeping it in. Played into the corner. Yule in there. Amalasi covers it up for the whistle. And the faceoff will be to his left. As Plant and number 44, Brody Kish of the Flames, talk a little bit there. Well, Gregory's got to be careful again. I, I keep seeming to say this, but... There's been a couple times where there could have been calls, and as you can see, Dan Tall there got, or Dan Plant rather, got a little bit upset with uh, Keish, and if he doesn't start calling things soon, this could get rough. Like you said, that Swanson, Swanson was taken down twice, and he missed them both. Five fifty-two gone, third period. We're tied at four. In there taking the face off is Brad Swanson against Stu Trimble, it looks like. See if those are the two that are going to line up. As they do a bit of ice repair work in front of Chris Malassi in there. Well, it's interesting that Malassi got the start tonight. He's not the really the number one goaltender for the Flames, Ziga Ivanik. He's got a 2.93 goals against average, but I guess he's resting tonight, getting ready for the playoffs. Chris Malassi with 4.46 goals against average. And at the other end for the Sockeyes, Jeff Gaudet, 3.79 well, goals against average. Flames will be right back at it tomorrow at home against Grandview, so Ivanek may go in that one. Or, again, he may be resting, and they may give uh, Malassi the start. Pretty good tandem and goal there for the Flames. Puck fired back in. Robertson's shot turned aside by Malassi. Penalty indicated. It's going to go against the Flames. Gaudet raced to the bench for the sixth attacker, tripping the call. The Sockeyes are back on the power play. Well, the Sockeyes have been taking it to the Flames here in the last little bit, and we might get a chance to see the penalty here. Right there as he takes down Overgaard. The Sockeyes have been taking it to the Flames lately. They've been getting a lot of shots on net, but the problem with the Sockeyes play here of late is that they haven't had many guys in front of the net been able to deflect the puck. they got to get guys to the front of the net on this power play, let the guys at the point take shots, and get them deflected. 
Sock guys have got to keep this control in this power play as they got two minutes to do it. Penalty coming at 6-12, tripping the call to number four, Tavis Eaton, off the faceoff. Sean Tarr has the puck, plays it into Howitt. Ridge Meadows Howitt. penalty on number four, Tavis Eaton. Two minutes for tripping. So what? Time of the call, 6-12. Lines having to be juggled up with Ivan Usyk gone now uh, from the game. Wust in there, turning with it. Plays it back to Howitt in front. Oh, and the great chance there. They couldn't quite get the puck to the man in front. Now Howitt has the puck. It gets away from him and down the ice it goes. 30 seconds gone in the Sockeyes power play. The Flames defense are doing a great job keeping the guys away from the front of the net. The shots are coming from the point, but the Sockeyes can't deflect them because they're not close enough to the net or to the shot. Bully puts the puck in, gets by Mike Pete. Howitt in there after it. Back and just gets outside the line. Nice work there by Mike Pete. There's a hit in the center ice as Wust makes up with Mike or Dan Tall. Tar centering pass too far for McShane. 50 seconds left in the Sockeyes power play as the Flames come back shorthanded. Played in. Of course, there was icing indicated, but there is no icing because the team is shorthanded. Penalty coming up to the Sockeyes. So the Sockeyes power play will end. The Flames will start as Gaudette comes out and touches the puck. And they'll be at five of four skaters aside momentarily for 26 seconds, and then the Flames will be on the power play. Well, the Sockeyes got a little bit... Uh out of control, I guess, late in that power play. And that's what happened. They just started to lose control, and they got a little frustrated. And that's how this penalty came about, the Shantar. So that'll kill the last 26 seconds. And in 26 seconds, Ridge Meadows will get a chance to show what their power play can do. There's that hit Wust did on, on Dan Tall. You just can see how solid Brendan Wust is as he stood up to Tall. Face off to the left of Jeff Gaudet. Yule against Marion. Yule puts the puck in behind to McLean. Here's the penalty call. Two minutes for hooking. Time of the call, 7.46. Hooking the call at 7.46 on Tar. Teams are even a strength right now for another 10 seconds. Centering pass across for Frederick. Trying to get through. Goes down. Fans call, the Flames fans call for a penalty. They don't get one. Sockeyes are shorthanded. Zercher. Gil Phillip tries to put it in, gets past Eden. Eden, who was in the box, gets back out there and now takes a penalty or a, a, a power play roll. A minute 10 remaining in the Flames power play. Centered across. Tavis Eden moving in. Centered it there. They're trying to jam it in. It's caught up in the meshing, and we have a stoppage in play. It's been one tie between these two teams. That go, we have to go all the way back to October 27th. It's at least a tie for this season. October 27th, a 4-4 tie at Ridge Meadows. That making up the Sockeyes 4-2 and 1 record. Four wins, two losses, one tie in seven attempts against this Ridge Meadows team. Now, is that a penalty or is that good defense on the Sockeyes' part? I don't think Gregory is going to call two this close of a hockey game and this late. A lot of Ridge Meadows fans and a lot of the players were sure yelling that it was a penalty, though. Good action here now. Flames on the power play. Tavis Eaton setting up. Shoots. Got it to save. The rebound. Turned aside there. They're still at it. Trimble plays it back. Kiss the shot in front. And the Flames player in front didn't know where the puck was. Jody Crane. There's a head for Plant. Dan Plant in on goal. Offside. Plant was trying to get away and with the crowd. I don't think even he heard the whistle for a moment. It was, uh, it was a two-line pass, but as we see it here, it was still a great pass by Jody Crane. There's the shot from the point. Gaudet with a save, and then the second save. And if this replay keeps running, we'll see Crane get it out right here. Now watch, Crane will G on his side of the blue line before he passes it, and the pass will go over on the other side of center ice. Great pass, though, but it was two lines.
30 seconds left in the Flames' power play. Setting up behind his own net is Brody Kish. There's Robertson. What a hit. Right in front of the bench. Wow. And the puck comes back into the flame zone. Offside the call as Pinch tried to drag his skate and stay onside, but he couldn't. Well, I think Pinch was still affected by that hit. Who was it, Robertson that hit him? Yes. Great hit by Neil Robertson on Chris Pinch right in front of the Flames bench. So it looks like the Sockeyes have killed this penalty with only nine seconds left. The faceoff is outside the Sockeyes end. And they'll go back to even strength in nine seconds as Sean Tarr is getting ready to jump on the ice. Penalty is over. Coy Myers gets it ahead to Swanson. Swanson across the line. Shoots. Malossi with the save. Was, looked like it was going to go just a little bit past the post anyways, but he gloves it just for safekeeping. 10.06 remaining third period. It's 4-4 at Richmond's Mineral Arena. The Sockeyes and the Flames. The PIJHL on Rogers 4. Not a very dangerous shot by Brad Swanson, but nonetheless, it's uh, only 10 minutes left in this game, and it's tied. Got to start taking shots in net, and who knows what's going to happen. A good shot by Swanson. An easy save for Molossi. Number 77, Jamie Worcester handles the puck. Overguard trying to get it in front at the side of the net. Rory Graham. Puck goes out into the neutral zone. 9.43 remaining, third period. We're tied at four as the puck almost goes dangerously to close to Molossi there. Got away from his player. Corbett falls. Puck tied up in skates. Foley manages to get it ahead. Now it's put in there. And Tar. Overguard dumps it in as he goes for a change. West comes out with McShane and Howitt. Played across to Gil Fillin. Gil Fillin to McLean. Pass ahead for, Mc, for Aaron McShane. Wuss tries to center it. McShane along the near boards. Back to Gil Fillin. Gil Fillin shot in front. Buck is, I think, under Steve Howitt. Well, Mark, 8.48 left in this third period. We are in for a great finish. This has become a, a great hockey game, 4-4 tie. Sockeyes looking to clinch first place. Ridge Meadows looking to stay in second. Ridge Meadows not making it easy for these hometown no. uh, Sockeyes. And this is what you expect, one and two with basically five or six games left in the season for both these teams. This is um, what we can expect to see this kind of hockey come the playoffs, which are just a few weeks away. Wust in front of the centering pass. McShane the wraparound. Puck is clear to the front of the net. Now come the Flames. Brandon Sung across the line. McShane clears it out. Offside now as it's carried back in by Trimble. And that was dangerous there as Brandon Sung had a great opportunity there to go down and get the go-ahead goal for his team as time starts to tick away as we reach the second half of this period. And at the other end, McShane had a great chance to do the wraparound here. McShane gets the puck behind the net and just goes right to the net as he tries to wrap around. Molossi was right there, and that created the chance the other way as Molossi's save booted it right out to a flame, and they went the other way for another scoring chance. Off the faceoff, Clint McLean. Puck put back in. <laughs> Zercher to Plant. Plant turning with the puck. Zercher has it. 
Zercher back to Robertson. The shot in front, a deflection there. Flames doing a good work of looking after their own end, and out comes Trimble. He tries to get out, but it's not out just yet. Yule after the puck. Now they get it outside the line. And after it there is Brandon Sung. Trimble and Benedictson in there for checking. Puck tied up in skates. Zercher has it and puts it down the ice. Icing waved off. There's a Flames player down. But he's up back up again. Overguard comes in. Overguard centers it for Tar. Tar tied up. Plays it back to Robertson. Robertson centers it across. Overguard tries to put it through and Molossi closes the door. Now the puck cleared back in and this will be icing on the Flames. With 6.53 remaining third period, we're tied at four at the Minaru Arena in Richmond. There's some nice passing there by the Sockeyes. Overguard had a great chance. Again, he had lots of time. As you see, Tar put it back to the point to Robertson. Robertson takes his time, sets it up, and puts it right over to Overguard. Overguard in front of the net. Velocity covered his angles well and made the save. And you take a look at him, Richmond Arena. And some of the fans here enjoying a good evening's entertainment. The face-off now in the flame zone to the right of Molossi. It'll be Swanson against Ryan Baltzer. Flames get that one off the face-off. And puck goes back into the neutral zone where Neil Robertson will play it. Goes back into the flame zone. Sean Tarr to Swanson. Swanson with a couple neat moves. Trying to get the puck. Can't get it. Tarr keeps it in there for McShane. And now it's played ahead there to the Flames. Chris Pinch to his brother, Darcy Pinch. McShane to Swanson. Swanson tries to turn on the Jets, and away he goes. Swanson across the line. Saved there by Molossi. The rebound. Oh, and Tarr with a great effort. Trying to get the go-ahead goal, but it's still tied at four. Hey, Brad Swanson did the right thing. He had Tar with him, but Tar wasn't close enough, and Brad Swanson took the shot. Great play by Swanson. Tar ended up getting the rebound anyways and almost scored. Good chance again for the Sockeyes to go ahead by one. Here's the replay as McCain sets up Swanson. Swanson shows a bit of speed here. Now he could put it back to Tar, but instead he shoots. Tar gets the rebound anyways. Velocity's there with another big save. The saves after two periods were 16-12 in favor of the Sockeyes, but Molossi, I think, has been the busier of the keepers this period. Swanson gets it back to Myers. Myers shot. Molossi, another save and another faceoff. That's the right thing to do, though, in the third period. you got to start just taking shots on net. The game is tied. Who knows what's going to happen? Once that puck starts going towards the net, it can change direction so many times. Just take shots on net, and that's what the Sockeyes are doing. Nobody's leaving tonight, Mark. This thing hasn't been decided yet. I would have to ask if they were leaving. They would have to have a pretty good excuse, I think, to leave at this point. Six minutes left, third period. We're tied at four. Top two teams in the BIJHL and the home stretch to the, to the regular season. On the road to the playoffs. Both these teams will be there. Question is where they will finish. This still has to be determined a little bit. Anyways. Puck fired back in. Godet leaves it there. Coy Myers. Aaron McShane. McShane fires it into the corner. How it's in there after the puck. Puck tied up in skates. West in there to help him. But How it coming out from the side of the net tries to jam it in. It comes loose, but Molossi had it covered up momentarily, anyways. Good hustle by Steve Howard on the end boards there to just fight off of his man and get the puck and bring it out in front of the net. He got a chance, not a great chance to score, but good hustle by Steve Howard to create a chance. Here he is. Watch him make his hit on his man. He'll gain the puck here. He'll gain control of the puck right here. Bring it out right on front. Didn't really get a good shot on net, but nonetheless, good effort by Steve Howard.
Puck in there, two players collide just inside the flame zone. Corbett and Crane. Puck played back in. Tavis Eaton turning with it. Does a nice little flip pass ahead. Robertson with a race against Tall, and McLean comes back to help out. Zercher after the puck against Eaton. McLean. Puck put back in there. Eaton. Round the boards. Jody Crane has the puck. Crane puts it in. Zercher after it. Round the boards it goes. Neither team wants to make a mistake. Puck played out into the neutral zone. Gil Fillin back there. Plays it up. As both teams make at least partial changes. Four minutes remaining. Third period. We're tied at four. Both teams are being real careful, Mark. Nobody wants to be the GOAT here late in this hockey game. This almost takes on the impression of a playoff game in some respects, especially this third period. Out comes Overgaard. Overgaard across the line, shoots. Turned aside of the blocker, saved by Malossi. Overgaard almost gets the puck back, but out come the Flames. Stu Trimble, lead pass ahead there for Ron Benedictson. Blocked there by Robertson, and Swanson fires it back in. 3.30 remaining third period. 4-4, Richmond, Ridge Meadows, the PIJHL from Mineru Arena, the shot. Oh, it just got out of Malossi's glove and goes to the corner. Almost a lead pass. There it almost is again for Benedictson and Godet. Covers it up with a couple flames racing in. The faceoff will be in the Sockeye's end to Godet's right. Well, Jeff Godet came to the Sockeyes late this year, and since he's uh, arrived, he's got a goals against average of 3.79. He's got a great win-loss record of eight wins, only two losses so far this year. He's played 602 minutes. There's the time left in this game, 3-10, third period. It's 4-4, and Mark, we could see some overtime. You said it. I, I always hesitate, hesitate. It's sort of like that shutout thing. We never want to talk about shutouts, but who knows? I said it. I said it. I'll take the blame. Oh, no, that's, who knows what will happen? Sockeyes managed to score here. They will capture first place if they manage to go on and win this game. Alex Zercher. Centering pass. In front, Yule has a puck. Where is it? It's covered up. And Malossi closes the door once again. Yule had a great chance in front, and I actually thought he did put it in. It looked like he got the puck past Malossi, but somehow it stayed on this side of that red line. And this game is still tied. You see... Zercher there, put it in front. Now right there, Malassi got a, or sorry, uh, Yule got a chance to, to knock it in, but Malassi stopped him. We'll get another look at it. It's hard to see from that angle. Nonetheless, this game's still tied. From off the faceoff. Yule trying to center it there. Zercher has it to Yule. Comes back and into the neutral zone. Dennis now plays it. And it gets back in there. 2.33 remaining. Third period. We're tied at four. Crane goes down. But I don't think you're going to see a penalty right now unless it's really a, a huge infraction. It almost Zercher, looked, sorry, Mark. It almost looks like both teams are just waiting here for this regulation time to run out and regroup for overtime. And icing is called. Sorry, Mark, you're saying both teams are waiting for... It seems like they're waiting for regulation time to end here and, and regroup and then go into overtime and try and start something there. Both teams are just content to ice the puck and shoot, the puck, well once, shoot the puck in once they've gained center ice. 
Oh, key face off in there for the Flames. Lust in there, taking it for the Sockeyes against Marion. Another big face off. Off the face off. Myers has the puck, plays it off the boards and out. How it's racing after it. How it gets the puck. How it moving, oh. taken down, tries to get it towards that penalty on the play. Well, I guess that's the huge infraction you were talking about, Mark. Kerry Gregory is called a penalty. But they're giving offsetting penalties by the looks oh, of it. Oh, man, no way. Yeah, you're right. You're right, Mark. Brendan Wust is going to get a roughing call. And Wust doesn't like it. I, I think he said for what? He doesn't know what it's no. for. I don't know either, Mark. So roughing and tripping. So what might have been a power play is now just offsetting penalties. That happened at 18-10. So both teams stay at equal strength. Wust, one of the key players for the Sockeyes, a number six... John Paveo, he's been out there tonight. I don't know if he's had as much ice time as West. Nothing against John, but I can't say that I've noticed him as much as West anyway, so. The penalties to Rich Meadows, number six, John Pavo, two minutes for tripping. To Richmond's number 16, Brendan West, two minutes for so roughing. Offsetting penalties, so no calls. power play advantages to either team. Teams carry on the at five aside. Flames, five flames setting up. They're tripping. looking for the winning goal. The Sockeyes West, two minutes for roughing. Time of the goal. Zercher after the 18. puck. A minute and a half remaining. Third period. McShane does it a couple, couple need moves. Zercher moving in. Can't control the puck. Back come the Flames to center. Rod Allegretto drops it there towards the net as the shot there by Rob Marion. Another shot. Got it with a save. And they're taking their man, how it's taken out there. Uh, McShane tries a neat little move. Zercher has the puck. Caught up in skates. 50 seconds remaining. Third period. In there, the Flames putting the pressure on. Overguard to Swanson with Tar. Back to Tar. Tar shoots off, just off the mark, and not by much on the glove side. 29 seconds remaining, third period. Back come the Flames. Overguard to Swanson. Swanson, one man to beat. Moving in on goal. Backhander Smith Malossi with the save. 11 seconds left in this third period. We're still tied at four. Great hustle by Brad Swanson. And before that, Sean Tarr's shot. Malossi didn't look all that sure on it. Here's Swanson's play. A nice little backhander. He went for the five hole. Malossi shut the door. But on Sean Tarr's shot, Malossi misplayed it. And he almost, if that, if that puck was on net, he, he could have scored. Malossi just misplayed it with his glove. Well, 11 seconds left, Mark. The Sockeyes are in the Flames' end. Crucial he face be, off. He will be for Jeff Godet to be alert down at his end because the Flames, if they win this, they can get a quick rush down the other way. Off the face off. Seven seconds left. Maybe one chance here for the Sockeyes if they can get the puck, but it's tied up in skates. And it looks like this one's going to overtime. 4 4 the score at the end of 60 minutes. We'll try to pick up the save count. Wow, that is a big um, difference in shots on goals. The Sockeyes had 14 shots on Malassi and only three. The Flames only took three shots on net on Gaudet. So what a difference. You were right, Mark. You were talking, talking earlier about the difference in uh, who was busier tonight in that third period, and definitely Malassi with 14 saves. So they take their two-minute break here at the uh, 
just between the intermission or between the third period and the uh, and the overtime. This is the mini intermission that they have. The teams go to the benches and. Uh, boy, I think this is, I'd have to look it up here quickly. I think this is definitely, the Sockeyes have been in a couple overtime games this year. They won one at Ridge Meadows. The, this one's going to overtime, so there's two. I'm trying to just look and see. I guess there's been at least three games anyways that the Sockeyes have been in overtime. And I guess they're at, uh, I don't have Ridge Meadows record, but I'm just looking here. One, one zero oh, and one would be my guess just off the top of my head. I think this is, this is, uh, so I guess just, yeah, three games. So, no, that doesn't make sense. one on one of those three games. I have. Well, the last game between these two teams that went to overtime, and remember, yeah. Brendan Wuss got that winner. So let's see if, uh, let's watch Brendan Wuss. Let's see if he can do it again tonight for the Sockeyes. I guess what I'm thinking is this must be the third game unofficially. They're one, they've got one win and one tie anyways after overtime is what we're trying to say. So, I don't know, the tension, I mean, just sitting up here in the booth, I mean, you can start to feel the, uh, I mean, you get right into the game and you can feel the tension. I don't know how the fans are. We got somebody walking right. Somebody by right the, in our camera right here. Front. See if we might. And uh, everybody oh, wants man. to get in on the broadcast. Sure, Maybe a future not? volunteer here. <laughs> and uh, Actually, anyway, we, should, we should have got it. We should have got his thoughts on the game here as we go to the uh, overtime. Actually, it's interesting to see, Mark. Both teams scored twice in the first period. Both teams scored twice in the second period. In the third period, no scoring at all. Both teams' defense tightened it up. And uh, I won't get you to comment just yet say anything just read over we're picking the stars oh now we're there we are again we'll look at that in a moment we're we've got the job of picking three stars tonight so we'll see um um what we come up with here regardless regarding what well depending on what happens well, here Brent, in this overtime period brendan, brendan was is definitely a candidate he's got a goal and two assists if i am correct there yeah no two goals and one assist actually so brendan west is has got to be steve how steve howell with two goals the flames have several players in there, number 17. And I apologize for not knowing all these numbers. Brandon Sung and Darcy Pinch has got, a, or rather, a Corbett's got a couple goals. Here we go, overtime underway. Fours are wild on the scoreboard. Fourth period, 4-4 four, four the score. Robertson puts the puck in. Hey, Mark, we've got to pick an overtime winner. Who do you think is going to score? Oh, I, I never like doing this. No, you got to do it. i got to do it. Got to do it. I'm going to say 99, Corbett for the Flames. I'm going to say just off the top of my head, and I'm going to say Swanson for the Sockeyes. Okay, I say Frederick for the Flames and Overgaard for the Sockeyes. We'll see what happens. It's on tape. The record, the bids are in, and we'll see what happens. As Overgaard could be in on it, but he's not out there right now. Swanson is, but back come the Flames. There's Dar Rob Marion moving in on goal. Centering pass. Oh, and the Flames player crashes into Godet. Gets back to the point. The shot towards it, and Marion is in there. Dangerous. The Sockeyes are going to have to watch him as he is dangerous. Centering pass. Another save by Godet. Out it goes. Flames are throwing everything they can at this Sockeyes team. Two great short scoring chances for the Flames, and Godet was there both times. Somebody's lost their glove. Boley has the puck. And the Flames get it. Back comes Tavis Eaton, moving it on goal. Eaton, centering pass. And Godet does the splits and keeps the doors shut. From the re rebound, another shot. Two saves there. Incredible. Hey, that is big time goaltending by Godet. Back to there. Eaton shot. How it blocks it. The fans are into this. Both teams are into this. Kept in. Fans feel it should have been offside. It's not. The play continues. Centering pass. Got it. In front. Great save. Got it. Got it. Stock stacks the pads. We played two minutes, seven seconds of overtime. Another shot. Off the post. That one went right off the post. Back to the point. Constant pressure by these flames. Blocked there. From behind the net, Coy Myers, will he get it out of the end? He doesn't. Eden keeps it, shoots it. Off the boards. Now a tired McShane gets over there, and he fires it down the ice for the icing. The Sockeyes need to gladly take that. Yeah, they needed to get off, Mark. They were tired. They were out there for that full two and a half minutes, and they were all of them tired. But, boy, Jeff Goddard, he came up with some great goaltending. And I'd love to see the just conclusion a of this overtime period. 
he kept this game tied here in overtime. Jeff Gaudette, he did some classic goaltending out in Ridge Meadows in that 4-3 win, and we're seeing classic Gaudette once again. He wasn't tested much in the third period, only making three stops to Molossi's 14, but he's earning his keep. Look at this. And we got a timeout here. That's the big save right there. He stacked his pads and just deflected the puck over top of the net. The Sockeyes are wise here to call a timeout. Ridge Meadows have been all over the Sockeyes here in the overtime, and Crosley is smart. He's got to calm down his players. He's got to talk to him and get him focused. This game is tied. They want to clinch first place tonight. They need to regroup and uh, get some shots in the other end on the other goalie. And Crowther, he's just saying, hey, let's keep this up. Let's keep going. This is great. Just keep pressuring him. Keep taking shots. And we take a look there at the Flames bench. Pete Crowther, the head coach. His assistants over there are Sean Crowther and Les Vart, Ed Koopmans. I'm not sure if he's in the building tonight, but he is also an assistant coach. He's not on the bench. Off the faceoff. Gil Fillon has the puck. Drops it back there from McLean. Sockeyes have taken their 30-second timeout. Now let's see what happens. Dan Plant carries it in. All the action was at the other end. Now Plant tries to set something up. Plant, the net is off. And I didn't see how that came up. Uh, Crane is down. But the net comes off. It's mooring, so we'll have a stoppage in play. It'd be really interesting to see that replay, to see if Crane was pushed into the net or if Crane went into the net himself. Because if he was pushed into the net, the Sockeyes were robbed. Tall made a great play. Or sorry, Plant made a great play to get in front and have a great shot on net. And the Sock guys will make a line change. Bring out Swanson, Overgaard, Tar. Would you agree that this has the intensity right here? Oh. At least for us here in the building, it feels a, like a playoff game, especially the third period and now into overtime here. Definitely. Off the faceoff. Seven minutes remaining in overtime. Kish. Puck played in there by Stu Trimble. Godet comes out and leaves it there for McLean. Tar falls. Puck tied up. McLean throws a hit. Draws some reaction. Swanson tries to play it out. Tar can't get it. It's at the point of the shot. Godet makes the save. Floated right to him, and he traps it on his blocker for the, for the stoppage. 3.20 gone in overtime. Hey, that was a great hit by Clint McLean on Trimble. Took out his man and threw it, did it effectively. Knocked Trimble right to the ice. This would be a, just, here, this, we might get a chance to see this hit. Yeah, we will. McLean is going to line up Trimble right to the right side of your screen. No, we missed it. It was a little further back. I was going to say, Mark, it would sure be a burn for the Flames if they would lose again in overtime. Their last game against the Sockeyes was a loss in overtime. They don't want to lose again tonight. They won in their last overtime game against Fort Coquitlam. They tied the game late in the in the period, or late in the third, apparently, and then they won it early on. Overguard with Tar. Overguard moving in on goal. Oh, just off the mark. That's my man, Mark. He almost buried it. I was just thinking about that. There's Swanson. Gil Fillon keeps it in. Puts it into the corner to Swanson. Swanson in front. Overguard moving in. Tied up. No call there. And I don't, again, I don't think you're going to see it unless it's such a major incident. Four minutes gone in overtime. Tied at four. Richmond, Ridge Meadows, Mineru Arena. The PIJHL on Rogers for this is regular season action, but it feels like a playoff game. Trimble keeping the puck in. He beats Overguard. Dennis has it. Plays it off the glass and out. Fired back in. Back comes Aaron McShane. Oh, and it's blocked there by number 44, Brody Kish. Moving in on goal, Frederick. Saved by Godet. Jeff Godet closes the door. Back comes Overgaard. Oh, or 
I can't even say his name. Howitt got the shot away. Howitt centering pass. Just about five minutes remaining in overtime. Tied at four. Dean Dennis puts it to Brendan West with Howitt. Flames player goes down. Back come the Flames. That's Darcy Frederick. Drop pass. Frederick has it. Moving in on goal. The centering pass. Got it. Another save. Jeff got it. What goaltending. This is big time goaltending. Godet has just looked awesome. Godet puts it around behind the net. Tar puts it into the neutral zone. Back come the Flames. That's Dan Tall in on goal. Where's the puck? It's all right through the crease. Right through the crease, and they fire it down the ice. Icing on the sockeyes. My, oh my. There has been chances at both ends, but especially in the sockeyes end, and Jeff Godet has just looked huge. He got lucky there on this last play, but he has made some amazing stops on these flame forwards. Frederick had a great chance in front to end this hockey game, but Godet was there to make the save, and this is the one I was talking about. He breaks into the middle. Actually, that wasn't the one I, <laughs> that I was talking about, but one of the great saves that, that Godet has made here in this overtime period. Now the Flames are exercising their 30-second time. The Sockeyes are not getting the pressure down in the, in the Ridge Meadows end um, consistently the way uh, Ridge Meadows is at. I mean, there was a flurry of about two and a half minutes. It was just constant bombardment, and you could see the Sockeye players just tired, and they could not get off the ice. It was just incredible. And... Uh, the Flames have now taken a breather, taken their 30-second timeout. Timeout for the broadcasters, too. Boy, oh, boy. There's the play by Frederick that I was talking about where he broke down the right side and cut back into the middle. Face-off will be in to Godet's right. A couple of nervous fans here in the Mineral Arena. 3.56 remaining in overtime. It's a great one you're watching here tonight. It was tied at two at the end of one. It was tied at four at the end of two. No scoring, obviously, in the third. So here we are, overtime. Trimble against Swanson. Off the faceoff. Trimble gets it back to Eden. Eden, shot. Got it to save. The rebound in front. Swanson turning with it. Off the boards to Tar and down into the neutral zone. Tar puts it in. Back come the Flames. Great chance there by Pinch. Behind the net, they're keeping the pressure on. Swanson flips it out to center, and down the ice it goes. Malasi comes out and plays it. The Sockeyes on a change. Howard almost, or Swanson almost gets it. Howard out there now. Moving in on goal, Pinch. In front of the net, there's some traffic. Shot. Where's the puck? Got it with a save again. And there could be a Sockeye player injured. Dean Dennis may have been hit. He is hurt. Anson Barrows, the trainer for the Sockeyes, is out on the ice quickly. And Dennis is down. Did he block a shot? You can't quite see it there. No, you can't see at all what happened there. But a good shot from the point and a nice little deflection. Well, Anson Barrow seems to be checking uh, almost as if he, he may have been cut uh, in the face. I don't know if he got a stick or what happened there. I did not see it. I just saw Dennis go down. But Jeff got it. What phenomenal goaltending in overtime here. Molossi in the third period closed the door. Now it's the gentleman in White's turn down to our left. He has just closed the door here as Dean Dennis gets to his feet. And he draws a round of applause. There's the time left on the clock. Do not touch your dial if you were thinking about it. This has turned out to be just an absolutely amazing hockey game, Mark. Godet is just shown why he's a number one goalie here in this overtime period. Off the faceoff. 
Buck goes down into the neutral zone and down in the flame zone. Malossi telling his men where to go. Worcester back there to cover and get the puck. Jamie Worcester. Puck to Marion. He overskates it. Two number eights there, but in comes Jeff Corbett. Centering pass for Frederick. Centering pass there. Save again by Jeff Gaudet. Centering pass, Gaudet covers it up. My, oh my. What a great play by Frederick to get that pass over to Marion. Marion had a great chance to bury it, but again, Gaudet, I think Gaudet got a piece of that. It was hard to see from my angle and our angle. Here's the replay. You'll see Frederick set up Marion. Frederick puts the pass over to Marion right here, and it looks like he might have got his left skate on it. Again, Gaudet making the big saves. Fans trying to cheer on the home team. Jody Crane in against Marion. On this faceoff. Off the faceoff, Crane gets it. Gilfillan with the puck. Behind the net, drops it there for McLean. 2.25 remaining in overtime. Puck out into the neutral zone. Clint McLean puts it in behind the net there to Alex Zercher. Zercher to McLean. McLean back, not out. Kept in there. McLean after the puck. Two minutes remaining in overtime. Dan Plant plays it out into the neutral zone. The Sockeyes are rushing their passes. They're having trouble getting out of their own end. Here comes Plant to center. Plant with a shot in, turned aside, and that one should get a whistle, and it does as it hits the meshing in the end of the rink. 1.46 remaining in overtime. 4-4 tie. Faceoff will be in the Ridge Meadows zone. Sockeye seem to be grabbing their sticks a little tighter than the Flames do. The Flames seem loose out there. They seem just comfortable with, with, with this, this overtime period. The Sockeyes are a little tense and just uh, not looking quite as good as the Flames. The Flames have had most, have had control in most part of this overtime and good control. Off the faceoff. Overgaard keeps the puck in. Racing after the puck. Overgaard with an effort there. Back come the Flames. Chris Pinch. Trimble has it. Dean Dennis takes the man and a tar. Head for Swanson. Flames put it right back in. 122 remaining in overtime. Pass across. No offside there. Swanson puts it into Tar. Tar centering pass. Overgaard couldn't get it. Puck played out. Robertson keeps it in. Robertson shoots. Oh, off the mark. A minute left in overtime. Tar keeping the puck in. Tar. Dennis to Overgaard. Overgaard moving in on goal. Tied up back to Tar. Tar's shot deflected. 38 seconds left in overtime. Sockeye's trying to keep some pressure on. Puck gets past him. Almost caught on a too many men situation. Back come the Flames. Frederick dropped there. Wust has it. 18 seconds left in the game. Down the ice it goes. And they call it icing with 13 seconds left. Icing is called on the Sockeyes. That was a strange icing call as Velocity touched the puck. It might have been behind the line, though. Yeah, it was behind the line. I didn't really watch to see the indication. Nobody seemed to really be watching, or, or the impression was that they, I don't think anybody really thought it was over uh, going to be uh, icing. But uh, big face-off, 13 seconds left. A strategy here, would they pull Malossi? Not probably with 13 seconds left. No. They, they don't want the win maybe that badly. No, they got to win this face-off, and they just want to pepper got it. They just got to take shots on the net. This is a great chance for the Flames. The key here is the face-off as Trimble goes up against Brendan Wust. Off the face-off. Puck tied up in skates. Frederick turning with a shot towards the net. Where is it? Oh, God, Evan, there's another save. A little bit of puck luck there for the Sockeyes. A little bit of puck luck. 
but he can't get out. I don't know what the save count, but I'm going to take a guess. It's probably 14 or 15 in overtime. And six seconds left what? on the clock. 4-4. Four, four. Look at this. He still doesn't really see it. He's just hoping it's underneath him, and it was. I thought it was in, but obviously uh, he sat on it, and my goodness, another chance for the Flames. Trimble, six seconds left. Off the faceoff, they try to cover it up. Two seconds left. And they'll get another faceoff. Well, Brendan West, right off the faceoff, just dived on the puck, just to waste a bit more time. Now we got a penalty situation here. Brutal. A misconduct indicated. Call 9:58. West has just got a 10-minute misconduct. A 10-minute misconduct. Time of the call 9:58. Off the face-off. The game is over. And then we've had some pretty exciting games here at Richmond Arena, but this one goes into the books as one of the best. 4-4 after overtime. 35. Chris Malaki won for a total of 27. Shot stop for Richmond's number one, Jeff Goddett, and overtime, 13 stops. For a total of 32 saves throughout the game. 13 stops for and Jeff gentlemen, Goddett now for in overtime, so that makes 16, 30 saves. I didn't get the save count for the Flames, but look at that. Jeff Goddett is congratulated. There you see Jeff Goddard, congratulated by his teammates Ryan Dawes out there, the backup goaltender for tonight. Game ends at 4-4. We're going to pick up the three-star announcement momentarily. And, huh, I'm out of breath here. Well, Mark, the Sockeyes didn't really deserve to win that hockey game in overtime. If it wasn't for Jeff Goddard, the Sockeyes would probably be going home tonight with a loss. And Jeff Goddard kept him in there tonight. We'll turn our attention to center ice and see if we can pick up tonight's three-star selection. This is also presented by Dave's Fish and Chips. Tonight's third star from the Sockeyes with two goals and one assist, number 16, Brendan West. Tonight's second star from Ridge Meadows with a total of 27 stops, number 35, Chris Malaki. Brendan West and, and Malasi, the stars thus far. Star from the Sockeyes with 13 stops in overtime alone, a total of 32 for the game, Number one, Jeff Goddett. And there's Jeff Goddett as he Ladies gets a round of applause. He's tonight's first star as picked by us. And I think that you're not going to have too much of an argument on that part. Uh, as I can obviously, I'm biased in my comment here. But we, we'd have made that decision. I mean, just phenomenal, like you start to say, Mark. I mean, uh, it's just incredible the, the, the stops that he made. He did the same thing in the 4-3 to three win for the Sockeyes. I don't recall if it was in overtime, but it was in either the third period or in overtime. Goddard was just basically standing on his head, and, and it was just phenomenal. He did get a little bit lucky there at the end where that puck was laying in the crease, but he had a great overtime period. And Chris Malossi at the other end, he... Um, he was uh, he was phenomenal. He got, got a star as well as Brendan West. We're getting the cue that we're going to have to wrap this one up here. So we will do that. We'll look forward to seeing you next time during playoff action here at Richmond's Mineral Arena. The final score from Richmond Arena. It was Richmond 4, Ridge Meadows 4 after overtime. For the rest of the crew, this is Mark Jones. For Mark Patrick saying good night from Richmond's Mineral Arena.